the food. <coughs> well, even if we do get any at this point, it's going to melt right away anyway, so it won't stick. So we already did really get by it. So thank you, Jesus. Right? <laughs> Give us a break from that. All right, we are on step eleven. Does everybody have one of these step elevens? Okay. So through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. And the scripture tied into that is, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, which is Colossians 3.16. What does it mean, dwell in you? Become part of you. Let the word of God become part of you, who you are and your character. I want us to turn to... Um, Psalm 63, uh, 65, page 723. I want to share something with you first. This is a very special step of seeking God because um, personally on my own journey, I found the Lord looking into this step. And that is why we do have this process because I found the Lord doing this work. Well, if, the Lord, if I found the Lord doing this work, I can help someone else find the Lord doing this work. And that's Amen. how this group all started, through step 11. And we're just really grateful for that. Amen? Amen. So one huge challenge, though, in this, of step 11, for any addictive personality, or anybody in, with their sin nature, is learning to wait on God. Okay? Isaiah 40, 31 clearly tells us, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Impatience is a mark of any addictive personality, okay, which lives for the immediate fix, high, or relief that comes from substance abuse or compulsive behavior. Okay? Now we must learn to wait upon the Lord if we want to find new strength for our recovery. We may even become impatient with our progress, but when we are in recovery for the long haul, step 11 directs us to depend more and more upon God. The result is the ability to turn less and less to our sin nature for relief, comfort, and joy. Though step 11 presents a simple approach to prayer and meditation, it is often difficult. Sometimes we resist because we fear that his will may be contrary to our own. This is, what, this is when we must reach again for the humility to align our will with God's will. Okay? Knowing that his light will keep us from the darkness of addiction or our sin nature. This spiritual step expands our tolerance of his light and gives us a previously unknown measure of freedom. This is the... This is the best step that I ever, in all the process, when I saw through this, because I wasn't very good at um, meditation. I was always good at reading the Word of God and talking to God and praying, but I was always hard of hearing, of stopping to listen to what God is trying to tell me. And this was something that I had to develop over the years in my recovery, because it's easy to say a prayer, but it's hard to wait for the answer amen. to that prayer. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. We want God to answer our prayers, but His timing is way different than ours. Sometimes it takes years before the prayer gets answered. Because He's lining something up or He's getting us ready to be able to handle the prayer, to get the answer. So that's what He does. So I want us to, oh, is everybody in Psalm 65? Joy in God's presence. See step 11? How many of us are impatient? <laughs> Well, we're, we're believers. We believe in Jesus. Why don't uh, patience is a fruit of the Spirit? How come all of us just don't get instant patience? Because fruit of the Spirit takes time to be developed in each and every one of us. God, the sanctification process is God developing His character in us, and that takes time. And the only person that gets in the way of that is each us. We get in the way. You can't blame it on the world or the situations. We get in the way of him developing his character in us. Our sin nature gets in the way of it. You can blame it on a lot of things, but it's really you that's getting in the way of God developing his character in you. 
And a lot of us have a very stubborn will. And can I get an amen for that? Amen. 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 <laughs> I say to myself, wow, I'm stubborn. And I love the Lord and everything, but I, I just don't like to wait. And I, I don't want to be patient. And I'm like, and God's saying, no, you're going to be patient because I put that fruit in you and I'm going to show you how you're going to become patient by putting the most impatient situations in front of you until you finally tap out and let me do it. And you say, all right, what else am I going to do? I'm going to have to wait. And if I don't wait, that's okay. He's just going to keep working in me and working in me and working. Until I finally say, all right, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm just going to wait up the more. What else am I going to do? What are my choices? What am I going to go back to? My ways don't work. That's why I turned my will and my life over to him. Look what it says. Joy in God's presence. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us, not only for the knowledge of his will for us, but the power to carry that out. Most of us need to desire something before we will wholeheartedly seek after it. You know what that means, right? When you really desire something, you put every effort into getting to what you want. You wholeheartedly get into it. Like if you wanna, if you wanna buy something or you like something, you put everything into it till you get it. Well, this is what God's trying to tell us. We have to have a wholehearted desire for Him, so we can actually get Him. Look what it says. Until we realize how much God loves us and cares about the details of our lives, we probably won't have the desire to pray to Him until we sincerely believe that he has completely forgiven us, we will be ashamed to face him. If we hold on, if we hold on to our misconceptions about God, this step will be a formidable chore rather than a joy. Mm -hmm. The life of King David should give us hope. After he had come face to face with his own sinfulness, he was able to sing, What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers. All of us must come to you. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What festivities await us inside your holy temple? Psalm 65, 1-4. God wants us to be like those who lived and served in his temple, walking freely into his presence. He wants us to know that we are welcome and valued before Him. Amen? See also Matthew 10, 29, 31. God is always present with us and can be a source of joy and happiness for us now. We can look forward to spending time with Him and living in His presence every day. What are you trying to say? When you have a desire, if you really want God's will in your life, for your life, you will desire Him and you will seek for Him wholeheartedly. You will seek for Him and wholeheartedly is what it's saying. This is one of the big concepts in Christianity. Wholeheartedly. If you go back in the Old Testament and read, the two people who got into the promised land had the spirit of seeking Him wholeheartedly and trusting Him wholeheartedly. That's why they got in. All the other people perished because they didn't seek Him wholeheartedly or trust Him wholeheartedly. So we really can't get that fulfillment, enjoying the Lord, and really hear what he's trying to say until we actually seek him wholeheartedly. Go with me to Psalms 42. All through the Old Testament, it tells about people seeking him half-heartedly and how we, they couldn't find him. Because they weren't seeking him with all their heart all their soul, and all their mind. Look what it says in verse 1 of Psalm 42. This is a psalm of the descendants of Korah. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Remember when you first found the Lord, how joyful you were? And oh man, 
I finally found some truth. I found the Lord. I'm saved. Heaven is my home. And then you get years go by and that desire and that just wears off. And it's like, how come I'm not as happy as I was the day I was saved? You know what it does, right? Our sin nature weighs us down again. And life comes back in. God takes us off the pink cloud. And he tries to, and he, he wants to strengthen our faith. And he pulls himself back. And as we wait on him, we get impatient. The world starts getting heavy again. And we lose that heart and desire for him. And what he does is he breaks us again. So we go back and renew that. So we can restore that again. And have a heart and desire for him. Now, is anybody in a broken state right now? I don't know. Hmm. Well, there's a reason why you're in a broken state. We shouldn't be in a broken state. We should be in a fulfilled state right now because God came into us and changed our lives. The problem is because we don't feel God anymore. Because it's not a feeling, it's a fact. It's a faith walk. We have to start trusting Him and seeking after Him. Look what it says in verse 5. Why am I discouraged? See it? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again, my Savior and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged. Well, they were deeply discouraged back then too. Okay? So we have to understand, discouragement is part of the journey. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Even from the distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Hermon. Now, if you can go back and remember that day when you found him, the joy it brought into your heart. That is what gives us the hope to keep going on. Okay, when you feel discouraged and where's God in all this? How many ask when they're going through a lot of crap, where's God in all this? God is in the water. God is through the fire. He's in the rain. He's through it all. And he's trying to create his character in us by putting us through all this stuff and testing our faith through it all. Either you're going to get better or you are going to get bitter. bitter. And if you get bitter, that's fine. But, you know, you don't want to be a lemon juice Christian. We always, and nobody wants to come to God like that because when you're in that state, you don't want, any, you don't want to talk about God to anybody. Because you're having a problem with them. So you, even if you do tell any about God, then it doesn't have any effect because your heart's not there. That's why we have to continually seek after Him and the joy of His presence. And He's always there. If I, if I read the Bible, it says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And God's saying, I'm just not a feeling, John. I'm beyond your feelings. I'm with you. I'm taking you through this storm, through the fire. You have to seek me through this. Do you actually seek God when you're in the discouragement and despair, or do you try to get out of it yourself? Or you just wait on the Lord, say, all right, I'm in the pit right now, but he's going to put me in the palace. Sooner or later, I have to wait on him. Or do you go back to your ways to try to get out of it? It's what you do while you're waiting what makes all the difference in the world. If you go back into the world again and try to fix it through going shopping or doing something else, that's not in the step that you can't escape. Then you're going to start all over again instead of just waiting on him. How many of us are very impatient with God? Amen. Thank God he is patient with us. And he doesn't hold that against us. Thank you, Lord. I like, I want like, all right, God, I'm praying. I want relief from this. I'm still sad. The devil's still coming at me. How come, Lord? I'm praying. Why is he still here? Because we want like something instant. All right, I prayed to Genie God. Here I am. Just take it. Make me happy right now. And if you don't do that for me right now, I'm going to go get happy myself. I'm going to go do something that makes me happy. But it really doesn't make me happy. It's the reason why I came to you in the first place. Do you want to go back into Egypt to get happiness? Into slavery? Or do you want to get free of that bondage and wait on the Lord? It's called patience. Amen. And that's what seeking the Lord is. We're very impatient. So you get saved and you, you go to church all the time. That doesn't mean that you're patient. You think going to Bible study and reading the Bible makes you patient? 
No, it's actually trusting what it's saying and being joyful even though you're going through a bunch of crap. I'm saying, God's going to work this all out. I'm joyful. When you turn it over to Him is when the joy comes. When you try to keep it to yourself, it never comes. I don't know about you, but a lot of good stuff's been happening in my life. And I'm saying, wow, the more I follow God, the more stuff's coming out. I'm, like, I'm getting more attacked than ever. Getting sick, problems with the family, problems at work. I'm saying, wow, well, there must be something good coming down the pipe. Oh, I must be doing something right. Because the devil hates me. He's pissed at me and I'm in his world. And he's going to throw every dagger he can at me trying to live right. So I can go back and live wrong again. And then blame God for it. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. So it'll ruin my testimony to bring others into the kingdom. Because the way I live my life is what's going to determine whether people come or they don't come. I can tell people about Jesus all along. But if they don't see Christ working through me, they ain't coming. And this is how I get it. By saying, you know what? I want to do what I want to do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the Bible and read the Word of God. And I'm going to wait on Him. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I'm impatient. I'm trying to wait on you. I've waited 15 minutes. 15 minutes is a long time in this world. You, you go in line for 15 minutes in this world, and people are writing to the management. And you're too slow. Right? God might say, no, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer than that because you're not ready. And I'm going to say, I go to Bible study and I read my Bible all the time and I go to recovery group and why ain't I ready? Because you ain't using any of it. That's why you're just playing it. You're just coming out with me back and forth as a religious activity and you're not applying any of it in your life and trusting me so I can't give it to you. So God's saying, I'm just waiting on you. When are you going to just wake up? That's what religion does. Religion takes us away from God. It makes us say, okay, I've been going to church and reading my Bible, God. Why, why aren't you doing everything? He says, I'm giving you everything that you need to do. Now you have to go do it. You have to be patient with impatient people. It's quiet. Yeah. Because we always want to blame it on anything else. The world, this situation, the way they talk to me, their rude, this, that. Yeah, hello, look in the mirror. Look at yourself and you're in a bad mood. How are you treating people? The way you treat others is the level of the way you're going to get treated. So if you've got grace and mercy in you like Jesus does to everybody, you're going to get plenty of grace and mercy back. But if you don't give it, you ain't getting it. But if you don't possess it, you can't give it. And this is how we possess it. I said, all right, Lord, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to read Psalm 119. Listen, whenever you want to get into a state of mind to get with God, read Psalm 119 all the way through. King David just meditating and thanking God for all he's done. He said, My, your discipline was good for me. You know what he said? Because I needed it. Mm -hmm. When you look in the mirror and say, you know, I need this. I need this kind of correction in my life. Or if you get, oh, I don't need any of this. I don't deserve this. <laughs> then you're in the flesh. God is corrective. God loves us enough to correct us. He wants us to be joyful even when we're discouraged. Am I discouraged right now with the way things look outwardly? Absolutely. But inwardly I know that God is going to make something good out of that. If I hang in there. Mm -hmm. But if I try to do it my way, something, not some, anything good is going to come out of it. I'm going to have to go back to square one again. So I'd rather just go halfway up the mountain. Instead of coming back down, I'm going to hang in there and wait till I get to the top. But that's the process of waiting on the Lord. You guys are reading the daily walk in the Old Testament. Right? How long before he fulfilled something? Sometimes 50, 60, 70 years sometimes. Remember um, Abraham was waiting for a child? So I can't wait any longer. Go sleep with her instead. Well, that was really smart. That set him back like 15 years. Because he didn't want to wait. So just when you're ready to get, get it, right, just when God's ready to give it to you, we cave in, go back in, and start all over again. And then we get mad at God saying, why didn't you come through, Lord? Because we didn't give him the time he needed.
to make the situation happen. We get the rest of our life. Look, he's going to work on us until we go home to be with him. The more in a meditative state you can get with the Lord, no matter what's going on in your life, the better off you're going to be. So wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be wise to spend more time with him so you can get that? You know what happens when we get discouraged? Close the Bible. Stop praying. Thinking that, all right, I'm going to fix me. And then we just delay it even more. Instead of saying, remember Jesus said, if, if, you know, if you can take this cup away, Lord, please take it away. But if not, your will be done, not mine. How about saying that? All right, Lord, I really don't like this right now, but what am I going to do? Your will be done. That's maturity. That's step 11. Maturity is not how much you know the Bible. Maturity is how much you use the Bible in the situation. That's, that's what spiritual growth is. How much of this you can use and apply in your life so you can show people Jesus. Amen? All right, we're going to answer some questions on step 11, so just hang in there. If anybody has, um, you know, for those of you that are just coming in, we have...